are you all doing? Let me hope you all are fine. I am fine too, I thank God. If you are a returning subscriber, thank you so much for returning back here. Thank you for your love. Thank you for your support. But if it is your first time here on my channel, hello, welcome to my channel. Please, before you leave, remember to subscribe. And when you subscribe, click on that notification bell. You will find it down there so that you'll be the first one to be notified whenever I upload a new video. I promise you, you'll always enjoy every content that I upload on this channel. So dear friends, in our today's video, like you have seen on the thumbnail, on the title, we are going to be having a love story from a Nigerian lady by the name of Josephine, who decided to relocate from Nigeria to Cape Verde to search for a white man. And I know some of you are like, what? <laughs> That's a crazy idea. Why would the lady do such kind of a thing? Really? Just for a white man? <laughs> I know, I know. But before you say that, please calm down. Watch this love story till the end so that you get to understand why this lady decided to leave her country, Nigeria, go to Cape Verde. She told me they call it Capo Verde. <laughs> me amused Cape Verde <laughs> to search for a white man. Let's not judge first. Please, please. So dear friends, she will first share with you what happened in Nigeria, her love life. If she ever dated a Nigerian guy, then dig a little bit deeper to really understand. Because without understanding where this lady came from, then we will not understand completely why she decided to locate to Cape Verde to search for a white man. So after sharing with you her past love relationship experience in Nigeria, then she will share with you a bit of her experience on online dating sites because this lady has tried it all. When I sit here and tell you guys, if you are searching for love on online dating sites or apps, and maybe your dream is to get married to a white man, then you have to try it all. And this lady, oh my God, her determination is on another level. <laughs> so she tried it all, tried online dating sites. We will get to know what happened. And then after that, we'll share with you her journey to Cape Verde. Cause I remember sharing a little bit of her story on my Instagram and I got loads of questions and that is why I decided to talk to Josephine so that she can come here and talk to you guys because some of you were asking Bella how did she do it how did she relocate somewhere like if you have kids how do you do it if you want to relocate to Cape Verde and somewhere asking Bella connect me to her <laughs> so after watching this video of course you are free to connect with Josephine and maybe tell you more about Cape Verde <laughs> without forgetting we're gonna be finding out after Josephine leaving Nigeria to Cape Verde <laughs> she has been there for five months did she find that white man that she was searching for you will know all that in this video <laughs> so it's gonna be really really interesting don't click off and be like ah today it's not a success story or we don't have online dating gone bad story <laughs> No, this is a very, very interesting, good story that might even change your life. Hi guys, my name is Josephine. I'm from certain part of Nigeria. Today, I'm here to share with you guys how I relocated from Nigeria to Cabo Verde in search of a white partner. As a Nigerian lady, I have always wanted to be in a relationship with a white man. A kind of relationship that will lead to marriage. So I have to relocate. But before I tell you guys the whole story of how I relocated to Cabo Verde, I need to tell you how my relationship life was when I was in Nigeria. As a Nigerian lady, my relationship life is nothing 
to arrive home a bat. I have been into a series of relationships that sometimes I will always tell myself, it seems this is not really what God wants for me. But you know, you grow up in an environment where everyone has the mentality that when a lady grows to a certain age, you are supposed to be with the right woman and settle down. I have been into toxic relationship, a kind of relationship where they think money is everything, that if I give you money, that is happiness. I have been into relationship where I also think, okay, this man is not having money, but if he's there for me, as a girl that is trying to survive on her own, just be there for me as my partner. There was this relationship I was. It's a kind of relationship where everybody in your environment, your family, your streets, like a family affair kind of relationship. The guy was so toxic to me, but when he sees my family, he will try to be nice. I call this kind of person, a manipulative person. They are always toxic to the people they are dating, but when they see the family and friends outside, they try to be nice. In this kind of relationship, where you want to live, it is always hard because sometimes you have to think about your family, you have to think about your friends, the people in the environment, that kind of thing. It comes to a certain stage where my parents think I'm the problem. I'm the one having the issues here because when they see this guy, this guy acts to them, oh, everything is fine, everything is okay. My parents were like, you are the problem, you are the cause. This guy is so caring. You just don't want to be a good lady to this man for him to make you his wife. I try to explain to my people that this guy is toxic. I have to quit because I'm the one wearing the shoes. I don't want anybody to tell me how to live my life, to dictate for me. I'm passing through hell. I have to quit that relationship. When you are in this kind of relationship, you are saying that your health is not okay. Your health is being at stake. You have to quit. So I quit that relationship. After quitting that relationship, you know, as a young lady, <laughs> so I have to try again. I saw this other guy. He was nice to me at the initial stage, but I got to find out that is into those kind of stuff. You know what I mean. You know, you know, you know, yeah, stuff. As a young lady, if you want to marry a man, you want this man to have a skill, to have handwork. A typical Nigerian man that is doing such thing, when you want to advise him to learn skill or handwork, he will not listen to you. On the process of being in this relationship, I wasn't seeing anything. He wasn't seeing what I was seeing, and I got to think that. This guy is not the rightful man for me because if he's a man for me, he will listen to me. He will know that what I'm trying to say is what will help us in the future. When I wanted to leave this guy, the mom was like, no, don't leave my son. Marry me, marry me. I told the mom, if I marry you, if you travel to another country or maybe something happen, you die. This your son is not somebody I can talk to. After quitting from that relationship, I have to hold on a little. I say, let me not rush. I have to take my time this time around. After waiting for some months, I saw this guy. His name is Kristen. When I met this guy, he just graduated from the university. He approached me that he lost me. Let's see how it goes. So I have to ask him some questions. Aside from the school, did you have any handwork or skill? Because I always tell myself that any man I want to be in a relationship with, and if the relationship is well defined, that man must have handwork or skill. This guy has no skill at all. But he tries to explain to me that he's going to make it he's into some kind of, you know, he's this type that loves to play games. He always thinks that whenever he plays the games, he wins, something will come out of it. He plays this game to the extent of him being addicted to it and most times he always lose and whenever he lose he is always frustrated. Nothing is coming out. I'm the one footing all the base. When I say footing all the base, my own base, I am not paying his bill because I have promised myself I will never feed a man, use my money to take care of a man until he stands tall for himself. 
But whenever this guy invites me to his place, series of occasion, we could be together, I'm the one always paying my bills. Sometimes when I visit this guy, if I tell him to buy me whatever I'm hungry of that instant, he will tell me he has no money. He will dip his hands in my bag and will take the money to go and buy the thing. I wasn't complaining because he explained to me that everything is going to be fine. I said, okay, let me be with this guy and see how things turn up. On the process of dating this guy, he is always requesting for money demanding for money can you help me with five thousand can you help me with ten thousand those kind of guys you all understand what i'm trying to say sometimes i will tell him that ah, you didn't establish me i'm a student you always demand money from me where did you expect me to get all this money he will sometimes tell me okay i'm not the type that want to assist a man i said i'm assisting you because putting my bills to come to your place whenever i'm hungry i want to eat you are not giving the money i'm the one putting my bills there was a day he called me that i should give him five thousand naira. i said i wasn't having the money and when he get to two hours after the call he called me back that there was a lady that sells petty kind of stores at the roadside where he lives he ran to meet this lady for help this lady assisted him with the 5,000 naira. So, I'm not the kind of partner that will assist a man when a man is in need. I need him to understand that, okay, that lady just helped you with instant 5,000 naira. So, she's not your internal rock of ages. What about the one I have been doing for you? What are the signs that makes me to know that this man is not the man for me and we are not going anywhere? Sometimes when we are working together as people in a relationship, he could tell me, whenever you see a man that wants to marry you, you can marry the person. I don't date people to tie them down. I always want to set people free. So if you see any guy that approach you for marriage or that is even more serious than me, you can go ahead with them. I was like, ah. So you can imagine when this kind of guy is requesting money from you how will you do this kind of thing because you cannot invest in where you know that there is no future between you two some people will say and eh, not all relationship that leads to marriage but every lady will want every of her relationship to lead to something good on the course of dating this guy i was being patient sometimes i also have my flaws. i don't always like to paint as if i'm the perfect type sometimes i could complain to him that you are not meeting up to me but i will also complain and forget about everything we are still in the relationship there came a day this guy called me on my phone josephine can you help me with three hundred thousand naira? He is not calling me that if I can help him with 300,000 Naira. That 300,000 Naira for those in Europe is 300 Naira. <laughs> I asked him, what are you doing with 300,000 Naira? He said he wants to make use of it. I told him that I am in school. Where do you expect me to see such huge amounts of money? Even if I'm having that money, I have bills to pay. I have school fees to pay, I have handouts to buy lots and lots of things to do. And as somebody that is going to school, my dad is late, my mom is the only one assisting me. And sometimes I don't always want to disturb my mom because I am this independent lady to save up before entering the university. So every of my bills in the university, I put it myself. This guy called me for such amount of money, I told him that I don't have. Even if I have such money, I can't give you the money because I have bills to pay. Now, some of you will like, is your boyfriend? You can assist him if you are having the money. Ladies, guys, I don't normally assist guys with money. That is not my thing. Because I expect you to build yourself. I can only assist a man that has helped himself. When I see that you have built yourself to a certain level and you are this guy that wants my growth, that have contributed to my growth, I will want to assist you. But if you are not that type, I will not assist you. Anyone that is watching me, if you are angry, that is just my thing. So when he called me for this money, I was really having the money, but I refused to give him the money. 
Now, after all the whole calls, I confide in my friend. This my friend happens to be somebody that is very close to me. You know, now this girl stops now. I have to share everything with her. And she was like, this guy could be testing you. And you just fail. And it's good you help him with the money. I said, no. This guy wasn't testing me. No, don't tell me he's putting me into test. No, he's not putting me into test. When somebody means something, I know they mean it. After everything, me not giving this guy the money, my people of God, did you know that the following week on Facebook, I saw a post, traditional and wedding ceremony post, of this my boyfriend wanted to marry a lady and the lady he wants to marry happens to be from my state but not from the same language i laughed i showed the photos to my friend my friend screamed she was what this man that asks you to give him three hundred thousand is the same person here i said yes that was when i understood and my friend concluded with me that this guy wanted to scam me. But thank God, I was very smart. Had it been I gave him this money, he would have joined my money to marry this lady. So guys, <laughs> you need to be very smart when you are dealing with some guys. Because in the name of boyfriend, they want to scam you. When everything happens like this, I now knew that this guy wasn't in to me. So ladies, you need to be very smart and wise. Know the signs and read the signs. After everything, he stopped chatting me. So I remember talking about Tanzanian men. I was like, oh my God, these people can cheat. These people can lie. <laughs> they can date 10 of you without even knowing each other. So we see even Nigerian guys, imagine this guy that was dating Josephine and Josephine thought maybe this guy will marry her eventually, though he had lots of red flags because the part when she said when she could go visit him and wants to eat something or drink something, he could go into her bag to take the money, then buy for her that Thing that she wants to eat or drink that's a red flag I told you if you are dating a guy and he doesn't want to spend even a coin on you it's a red flag <laughs> guys everything that I tell you it's not that I sleep I wake up and be like what will I tell my people today <laughs> no <laughs> these are real real things that happen don't ignore it and be like Anyways, I have to show him I am independent. No, a man should be a man, period. And imagine, guys, if Josephine gave this guy the money he wanted. Oh, my God. It was going to hurt her the most because her own money was going to marry another woman. Men can be cruel. That is why when you are dating, you're getting to know a guy, stand on your ground. <laughs> Make sure that guy has got everything that you ever wanted in a man. There is nothing like feeling pity for a guy. No pity, oh, no pity. <laughs> One of my friends that I am guiding on online dating sites, one time told me, Bella, there is no mercy. <laughs> no mercy for these guys. I'm not telling you to be aggressive with guys that you meet on these dating sites or dating apps. No, but just watch the red flags. You see, even one red flag, that's the perfect reason to end everything there. I have to live my life, living my positive life as a young lady. I do business of selling shoes, clothes, you know, I could go to Onicha market, go to Lagos market. Lagos is the largest city in Nigeria and one of the largest cities in Africa. And there is one market again, I always go to buy goods. This market is Onicha in Anabra State, Nigeria. So you could see as a young lady, I try to make ends meet. I'm not this kind of lady that is dependent on somebody i'm independent i make my money i save up to foot my bills 
So after everything, I have to live my life. On the course of living my life, I'm this person that loves YouTube a lot. I'm a YouTube lover. My friends, people in my environment, they know I love YouTube so much. Some of them will tell me they are not always on YouTube. They are on Instagram, TikTok, Facebook. But why is it that I love YouTube? I said I just love YouTube and the content I always watch them at uh, interracial relationship and reaction videos. I love everything about reactions, interracial relationships, and dating tips. On this particular day, I was watching this popular Nigerian lady who is into interracial relationship, Nos Glory. Nos Glory is a Nigerian lady married to a Serbia man. I always watch her. So I came across one of her videos on how to start a YouTube channel. On watching that video, I was inspired and I opened my channel. I have my own channel, Josephine Vibes. On the course of watching her, on this particular day, a video pop up. You know, YouTube content, as you are watching the YouTube could show you other content that relate to those topic i came across this channel africa bella's channel so there was one video that popped up how i met my partner that video has part one and two whenever you are watching videos every videos in that channel will be popping up so i could watch like 10 to 12 of african bella's video every of her dating teams the best app to get your white man and she shared a video where she talked on the best dating site. That was among the first videos African Bella shared on the best dating site to get a white partner and how to go about it. She mentioned many dating apps, but one of the apps I was fast to download was Afro Introduction. African Bella's channel makes me to know about dating apps. The first video of dating apps I watched on YouTube that makes me to know what dating apps is, is African Bella's channel. And I'm so grateful to her to date. On Afro introduction, you are supposed to pay or the person you are chatting with must have paid before you can see their messages. You can send likes, but when they send message to you, if either of you have not paid, you cannot see the messages. So I saw a place where they put you need to upgrade so you could see messages of order. But you know, as an African lady, I refused to pay. Mm -hmm. My mentality was that any man that wants me, if he is interested in me, he should be the one to pay, not me paying. So guys, I didn't pay. Be on Afro introduction. Afro introduction is a dating app where you see more of older men. People from Europe, all over the globe. I see that Afro Introduction is one of the dating apps that have higher chances of meeting people, even though I did not meet anyone there, but it's still one of the best apps to me. Now, using Afro Introduction, there are many challenges, challenges like hell. I could meet lots of white men, but they always ghost me, which makes me to ask myself, ah, is it that I'm not beautiful or I'm being cursed? I've been the juju from my parents' village, following down to dating apps. Most of them could waste my time. You that is chatting with them, you should be very smart to know that this guy is just wasting your time. There is nothing coming out. Sometimes I will run to African Bella's channel to get updates about the person I'm chatting with because she's always sharing videos on how to identify particular white guys from certain countries. On the process of session, I came across this guy from Sweden. He chatted me the first day. His first conversation sounds interesting. I said, okay, let me chat with this guy if he's the real person. One thing that even makes me to have time for him was when he sent me a video of a Nigerian who is married to a Swedish man. The name of their channel is Becky and Mike. So when he sent me this, I was like, this guy is somebody that have interest on interracial couples. On the process of chatting, 
he asked me, where do I work? I told him I'm a stylist. I work in a spa house. Immediately, I told him I work in a spa house. I sensed some silence. He stopped shutting me immediately. Ladies, that is a sign. That is a red flag to notice. I felt like, is this man not okay with what I'm doing? What kind of a lady is he looking for? Is he after rich ladies? Or he thinks stylists don't have money? That was what I could ask myself. After ghosting me that day, the next two days, this guy came online. He chatted me up. I asked him why did he have to act that way. He gave me some flimsy excuse, which I know that this guy wasn't into me. And I got to find out that his profile photos on Afro introduction, on WhatsApp, and when we video call, they are not same. Ladies, please try to view this part I'm trying to tell you. Whenever you are chatting with a guy, try to look at their profiles very well. I saw her in online dating site. The other guy I met also was also from Sweden. I replied him. When I replied him, it also took him like two days. He answered me back and said, you are ugly. There is a mistake I made. When he sent me a message, I was supposed to check his photos very well. So when he told me I am ugly i have to go back and check his profile and you know see what he wrote on his bios his profile looks like a madman that was when i knew that i am chatting with somebody that has bipolar disorder what i could just tell him was sorry now i know i am chatting with a bipolar disorder patient sometimes when you watch african bella's videos there is a video where she shared something on the kind of guys in online dating apps. Some people have health issues. After all this experience, I have to back off from online dating. You know, I just have to live my life, give some breaks, and that was it. Imagine this guy that told Josephine is ugly. Guys, is Josephine ugly? Look at how beautiful she is. <laughs> Where is the ugliness? <laughs> that is why I've been telling you, don't take what these guys online tell you to heart. <laughs> Never ever. <laughs> I remember I told you, a guy that I was chatting to, all was good and then... <laughs> He sent me his photos, I sent him my photos, and then after sending him my photos, he's like, you're not my type. I went to the mirror and started looking at myself, questioning myself, am I ugly? <laughs> Why did this guy say that I am not his type? <laughs> and at that time, I didn't have enough experience. <laughs> Rejection is real, it's real, but what these people tell you, don't take them to heart, don't believe them, okay? Believe in yourself, believe that God made you as beautiful as you are, as unique as you are. There is not going to be another you, okay? So keep taking care of yourself, keep loving yourself the more than listening to these online losers and start hating on yourself. So we see even Josephine phoned this guy that told her <laughs> she is ugly. That's not true at all, at all. <laughs> yeah. Another thing that I told you very, very recently when I was sharing with you online dating tips is that when you are online, before responding to a guy, go to his profile, okay? Read it very, very well. Some of the guy's profiles you will find the red flags right away. Just by reading through their descriptions, what they are looking for in a woman, just by looking at their photos that they posted on online dating sites or apps. Never ever ignore that. And we learn this from Josephine's story. I'm a lover of YouTube. I've always loved to watch YouTube videos. On this particular day, I came across this content on Cabo Verde. 
The person that is having this channel happens to be a Nigeria lady and from my state, daughter state, and also happens to be from my language. She is a big YouTuber. Something about these YouTubers. Whenever you watch them and drop comments, they could identify that this person is always commenting, you know, they want to engage you in conversation when you ask a question. So I asked her, how can I reach out to you? Because her content is all about Cabo Verde, living in Cabo Verde, how Cabo Verde is. Cabo Verde is an island in the west coast of Africa. I have to research the population of the island, the people. I was so interested to relocate to Cabo Verde. If she shut me up and everything progresses, but the cost of chatting with her, dear, is this question I asked her. I asked her, if I come to Cabo Verde, Will I be lucky to see a white man as a partner? She replied me so fast and said, Yes, why not? White men are everywhere. You will meet the rightful partner when you come to COVID. It could be a matter of one year, two years, but there's high chance that when you come to COVID, you will meet the rightful person. So guys, I have to ask her, how do I come to Cape Verde? The process, what is it? What does it entail is to come to Cape Verde? She said, okay, if you are ready, let me know. On this particular day, I called one of my closest sister. Her name is Tessie. I said, I want to make a move. I don't need to wait because the more I'm waiting, you know, I'm just like, I want to go to Cape Verde. Every of my servants, I have to gather myself and because I didn't get much information on the traveling process, but the agent, she connected me to ask me, are you coming by air or by road? I have to thank it because then I thought flying by air from Nigeria to Cabo Verde is very expensive. So in order to manage my income, I told the agent that I was journey from Benin Republic to Senegal. Benin Republic is the closest country to Nigeria. From Benin Republic, we journey to Togo, from Togo to Burkina Faso, from Burkina Faso to Mali, from Mali to Senegal. My sisters, my brothers, I saw her. On the day of the journey, I enter a bus to Lagos. When I get to Lagos, I slept at the park till the following day. On that morning, we have to set on our journey. The embarrassment I faced wasn't here. Because those people, those customs at the road, they have this mentality that every Nigerian lady traveling to other African countries, they are going for something else. And when I say something else, you need to understand. I don't want to say it. You have to challenge this matter. Don't say that. I am not going for such thing. I have my own handwork. I'm a stylist. I also have a YouTube channel. I'm traveling to this country to better myself. Their mentality is that as you are crossing from your country to the other country, you are going for something illegal. When we get to Benin Republic, I have to book a bus that will take me to Senegal. But before I say that, there are some requirements which you are supposed to meet up before you will embark on the journey. If you are coming from any of the West Africa countries, Cabo Verde is among the ECOWAS. When we say ECOWAS, Economic Community of West African States, you don't need a visa when you are coming from any country, West Africa to Cabo Verde. With your passport and yellow card, your agent will book your flight for you. You submit all the necessary requirements, pay your money for your BTA. You can get set for your journey. If you want to take flight from your country direct or you want to journey through road just like as I journey through road, it's all left for you on how you want to manage your income. So guys, we set to Benin Republic, we set to the park. Did you know that the park which I was supposed to enter box to Senegal, I made a mistake and I entered the wrong 
bus. The rightful path I'm supposed to enter bus to Senegal, the name of that path is to park. But because I'm a novice, I'm a JJC, and most of those taxi men, the way they do it, those people that own the park will give them money to bring passengers to them. So they will bring you to the park which they know that this park is not good at all. So we pay. Now they will ask you, they always do transit. When you book the bus, they will ask you, are you dropping at Mali or direct to Senegal? It's my first time. I don't want a transit. I just want to get straight to Senegal. Another thing that I can say about Josephine, this lady will succeed in life. Yes, because a lady who can take that risk to leave her country, go through everything that she went through, and she's here as beautiful as she is, Oh my God, <laughs> she's so determined. There is no way she won't get what she wants in life. And this is what I have been telling you guys. Don't sit down and cry. Take actions. Don't be that lady that is always full of excuses. <laughs> I posted a story of a Nigerian lady who found love on Hinge with an American guy and I was trying my best on Instagram to show you how to change the location, give you some tips, but guys, you won't believe it. Still people comes up with excuses or it doesn't work completely in my country. Use VPN. VPN does not work. If VPN does not work, my dear sister, still exists loads of dating sites or apps that you can join and find love. Do not just stop there and be like, Hinge does not work, I'm finished, end of the world. I'll never find that white man that I am searching for. No, let us stop complaining all the time, but look for solutions. I always say finding love online is very difficult. You can go through lots of challenges, but it's not impossible. There is a solution and you will finally find that right man. You know, when we get to Mali, when the bus got spread, we have to sleep over the park. They have to fix it the following day. We get to a certain junction again. This bus also developed forts again. And we have to wait for three to four hours again before continuing the journey. And the place the bus breaks down hmm, is not a place that is close to where you could see people, where you can see people to relate with nothing like that. So after everything, they have to call people from the neighboring villages. They have to come fix the bus and we start our journey again.
I was even sick. It comes to a certain point on the journey, I was sick that the drivers have to ask me, Was this my first time of traveling? I said, Yes, this is my first time. I haven't embarked on this kind of journey. And they were like, Sorry. This driver has to buy some drugs for me. They took care of me as if I am their sister. I'm still grateful to them because they act so nice to me. And my thought was like, ah, had it been I just took a flight, I wouldn't have passed through this space. And a thought also came to me that if I have anyone, a brother, a sister, or a friend that want to travel, I must allow them to pass through road journey because it is so very difficult, so stressful. It's like hell. Though the journey was safe, it was well secured, but the stress of entering the wrong bus, that was what I passed through. So the journey took us one week. It was a whole lot of one week before we get to Senegal. Now, before getting to Senegal, the agent that was into the booking of my flight, I always noticed him that this is where I have gotten to. So he could make preparation of my flight from Senegal to Cabo Verde. On getting to Senegal, this man haven't even prepared my traveling, that is my flight from Senegal to Cabo Verde. All he could do was to tell me sorry that he will refer me to somebody in Senegal so I can stay with before he makes the preparation of my journey from Senegal to Cabo Verde. I lived with this lady for two weeks. Living with that lady, I passed through hell because that lady happens to be somebody that is into those kind of things. That is her business. That is what she does. So when she sees me, she thinks my purpose of being there with her or traveling to Cabo Verde, but I let her know that I'm not here for that. She was really nice to me. She took care of me. I was even frustrated to a certain stage that I was not telling the agent that if my going to convert is not going to be successful, return back my money. Or, or even if you don't want to return my money, I can make call to my people so I go back to Nigeria. Because when I was in Nigeria, I wasn't suffering. I was living my life. But because I want to marry or be in a relationship with a white man, I have to embark on this journey but that was only my mindset i didn't tell anybody that my major reason the primary reason i was going to give it is because of a white partner not just for the work so on staying with her i got to see a lot of things experience lots of things but at the end i was still grateful to her now i was always putting pressure on the agent that please Try and make everything possible. I'm tired of being in this place. Most of the agents can act as if they are being sent 
from here after everything with force before he now so okay on so so day this is how you are going to go about it your flight has been booked this is your ticket number go and print it out go to the airport at dakar in senegal dakar is the capital of senegal and that is where the airport is my people you know when you get to the airport the money of the bta which you have already paid for or even if you have not paid for it you are supposed to have it with you bta money is the money that shows that you that is going to another man's country you are well to do to take care of yourself they don't joke with that money at all on getting to the airport my people of god this agent disappointed me he didn't give me bta money it could call me that somebody is going to bring the money to me but i didn't see the person so on being at the airport i was frustrated i was like let me go back i don't want people to put me on the news that a nigeria lady is traveling to a certain country without bta she's stranded here you know that kind of thing i said i am going back but there was this nigerian man that said i should embark on my journey that as far as they didn't deport me i haven't gotten to where i'm going i should just enter the plane when i get to cabo Verde, if they deport me before i can go back he also asked me are you with your atm i said yes he said okay use the atm to defend yourself that your money is in your atm so you who were asking how she did it i think now you have got an answer it wasn't easy at all there is nothing easy in this world <laughs> even if you decide to stay without doing anything it's not easy still so you have to wake up <laughs> and take actions okay dear beautiful friends so her story is going to end here for today but part two is coming very very soon so that you guys can find out what happened in cape verde did she find that white man that brought her there because <laughs> she went there to search for a white man so we need to find out and how did she settle down you know in cape verde it's a new country like finding a job and surviving in that new country we will get to know all that in part two just stick here guys sa island is the best island for you to visit how do i look am i not looking giving uh -huh, uh -huh. this is my life here in cabo Verde. you won't believe i'm in work and also make a video but i have to thank you and please watch this video to the end and see the beautiful view of this sunny i land today so guys another thing that i wanted you all to know you who wanted to connect with her <laughs> josephine has got a youtube channel which goes by the name of josephine vibes yeah connect with her there and get to ask all the questions that you want to know about relocating to cape verde and thank you so much for watching this video i really hope you enjoyed it you learned a lot if you have liked it give it a thumbs up share it with your friends family everyone that you think will enjoy this video and learn something watch my other videos too they are super super good comment below what you think about this video if you haven't subscribed what are you waiting for subscribe to this channel join the family and thank you for subscribing until next time guys i love you so much you're always here in my heart ciao ciao